In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Hail Mary, for the grace the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Sorrow for the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Dear faithful, on this Sunday, the 16th Sunday after Pentecost, I have chosen to preach to you about giving back, being generous. This does tie in with the epistle and gospel of today. Maybe at first it's not so obvious, but I think always when we pre preach, there's always room for correlation or the weaving together of what our Lord is trying to teach us daily through the church and her liturgy, what Holy Mother Church is teaching us every Sunday, and all the practical details of our life. In the epistle of today, we heard St. Paul say to the Ephesians, now to him who is able to do all things, him being God, more abundantly than we desire, understand, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church, in Christ Jesus, and to all generations, world without end. Giving back. It's not an easy thing to digest, because often Father Burfitt, as you know, talks mainly about spiritual things and about practical things for families, and doesn't often talk about financial things, doesn't often talk about material things, and there's a reason for that, because we don't want to put the emphasis upon material things. We're all going to heaven, we hope, and in heaven there are no material things, all spiritual. And we don't want to get immersed in all the material things to such a point that we put that as our God. But you know what? We have to be good stewards. Our Lord has said so. So when we're given a lot, or a little, whatever degree it is, we're meant to give back in generosity. Now that could be on three levels, at least for today, that's what I've chosen. Church, family, and country. Church, family, and country. This is really incumbent upon us to give alms. And alms as you know, we speak about a little bit of Lent, because what is it we try to do at Lent? Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. But we're not just limited to Lent or Advent to give to others. No, it must be a constant Catholic Christian attitude, alms. Some pick it up easier than others. And so, yes, we're dealing with the material aspect of a spiritual soul. So we all have a soul, we are baptized, and we wish to do good. And we can't avoid it that what comes out of the soul touches material things. It has to. And that's the way God is, right? What came outside of God is a creature. God is not a creature, but anything he creates outside of himself is a creature. And the same with us. Whenever we go to do something good, we cannot avoid doing something, touching something material. Our flesh is material. We have to operate through it. So we want to be very careful in our minds as Catholics that we don't just get this kind of separation or develop this separation of thinking. As long as I'm a spiritual soul, as long as I am praying, I don't have to look after anything else. Well, then, you might as well not get married. As a father of a family, as a husband and wife, you're going to have a lot of material considerations. Things that wear on you, things that are very difficult. And you wonder sometimes how you can marry them with the spiritual. You feel like it's always tearing you away from the things you just want to give your soul and your life to God. It's like a burden on our back at times. So we want to keep this focus. 
We are Catholics. We live in this world. You can say, I'm in this world, but not of it. All right? Good. You don't want to be secular. You don't want to be materialistic. You don't want to be liberal in the liberal sense of some kind of moral liberality. No. We don't want to do those things. But you see, what I often can see in families and in communities is people, because they're a Catholic and then add on top of that traditional Catholic and etc., that somehow they can just draw back and God will take care of everything. Even so much so, i give you an example. The thinking of an individual who has said to me, I don't need doctors, I don't need medicine. Father, just pray for my good healing. And I said, you know what? You pray for the healing, I'll pray for the healing, and then you make use of the means God gives you. And that's how you'll find your healing. And some of those healings are things we don't like. Those helps. Such as when I had a back surgery. Yes, I prayed to God to have a healing. I prayed to God to be able to do my duties. You see me standing before you today. But it was by using what was available to me. Making use of the doctors, a little bit of medicine, surgery, and then I got well. And that was God's work. Be careful of having this fideism. Now, that's a big word, and it's not something I plan to preach on today, but a type of faith does everything. Be careful. God helps those who help themselves. And so sometimes we want to put a lot of blame on God, because I said my prayers, God, and you didn't do anything. And then what would he say at your judgment? Yep, and did you see all those people around you? the means I put at your disposal, if you'd only been humble, look what you could have accomplished. But you were so proud. It was everybody else's fault. It was God's fault that I never made it in this life and never had enough to take care of my family. And that would be wrong, almost blasphemous against God. God gives us crosses, no doubt. And he puts some at a high level of prosperity and others barely squeak by. But he always gives us what we need. And we need to thank him. And we need to be praying every single day for the future. Be careful of having a real balanced mind and not going straying off into some kind of extremes either side. Some kind of fideism, like a presumption. And on the other side, a type of despair. Nihilism. I'm damned if I do. That type of attitude. Be careful. Why would God help either camp? You're sufficient in yourself, he could say. You know everything? Go ahead. No, it's not the way it works. What have I done to but run parishes now for 21 years? And God always blesses those who give. He does. Man, when you have hardly anything and you give that little, as we see in the Gospels, a little groat, God will give you back a hundredfold. Just when you think you've given up the best treasure in your life, and he gives you even better than that. A young lady I know the other day lost her medal, her miraculous medal, which was very special to her, given the occasions, and it was on a very nice gold chain. And she couldn't find it, and she was pining away, and I said, you really like that? She said, oh, Father, I really love that medal. And I said, well, it ran away from you. And it went to somebody else who could use it. Isn't that the way we must look at things? When we lose something we really treasure and it's out of our grasp, God took it somewhere else to help somebody else. 
material things for us or what we need at the moment to spiritually grow. And I have no doubt that miraculous metal helped her to grow. It was a grace. She just as recently done so many great things in the church and that was the end. God took that material thing away, put it over there. Somebody else is going to now benefit from it. It probably was laying on the ground and you can imagine the way I imagine it. Oh, look how shiny that is. Nice gold thing. Oh, and it has a little metal on it. Here, I'll just put it around my neck. Somebody's wandering around right now with that miraculous metal and they may save their soul. Think about that. Maybe you lost some money in the street. Who picked it up? Somebody who needed it. You say, well, they stole it from me. Perhaps. Perhaps. But God is the distributor of material things. Not us. He gives to who needs it, who wants it, who prays for it, who is a good steward. You want to know why some people fail in their finances? They're not good stewards. You want to know what makes a parish successful? Is that the parish pastor and administrators are good stewards. And if the people are also generous, you know that's a precept of the church to tithe. But you know how often I find people that just don't know what that means? They've never heard the word? Tithing? That's a precept of the church, just like there's a precept to go to Easter communion. People never even heard of the word tithe. Then you say, how much, Father? Well, it should be 10%, right off the top, for God. Not everybody can do that. But have we tried to do it? To see how God blesses us? How can the Mormons and the who knows who get it better than we do? This doesn't make sense. Because they put a lot of emphasis on the material things, but let us not, as Catholics, they told you at the beginning, some poo-poo that. No. The father of the family, the, the parish priest, has to always be thinking of that. And then that takes us to another point, the family. So that's the church and being generous. The church thinking that God will bless. But what about our family? I've never been a fan of a young man having his little box and he just does everything within that little box, his little circle. And then he wants to pull everybody into his little circle. Now he's a bachelor, remember. And now he's going to pull his wife into that circle, children, friends, whoever, has to fit his little box. But he's not taking into consideration that worked as a bachelor, but it, it won't work for lots of people. You can't force all those people in that one box. You have to better yourself. Well, so for instance, I take an example of a, an accountant. He may be perfectly good at his job, small little town, he's got everything just made, and then he's thinking about marriage. Hmm. Will that job support a wife? Yes or no? It probably barely supports him, and he's fine with that. Good. He may go to the end of his years, being financially stable. But what about the wife? What about multiple children who have to be fed, who have to be educated? And they may have to be fed and educated in California. What then? Is it going to work? Be prudent. Be practical. He's going to say to himself, that won't work. I need to better myself. I'm going to go for my CPA. And then I'm going to try to get a, a job with a big company, the best I can. That's the way it is. And that's not being materialistic. That's being a realist. That's being a good father. Because I tell you, that one of the biggest tensions in marriage is financial. I give plenty of conferences, plenty of retreats, and I listen to plenty of couples. But the biggest concern, outside of spiritual concerns, is finances. 
Because if the man and the woman decide to get married, and then they're willing to take the burden on of the finances, they're going to see real quick, oops, maybe we should have done a little preparation. Or they're going to be in their marriage, and then one's going to be picking at the other. You're spending too much money. The other's going to say, you're not doing the best you can. Wow, is that hurtful to both. Very hurtful. And that could have been avoided. But now you're married. You're not going to run away from each other. You shouldn't. You now have a sacrifice to carry. And it does nothing, gains nothing, to start picking at each other financially. The man's going to have to break his back now to get ahead. He might always have to do that. And the woman should not be castigating him. But rather, they're in this together. They're equally yoked. Equally yoked. It is primarily the husband's responsibility, the man's responsibility. He must better himself. He must be generous with God. He must give back. He has to have a great fiscal responsibility. But it gains nothing for the wife to pick at him. She should rather encourage I'm right behind you, husband. What do you need? What do you want to do? Keep going? Fight hard? Otherwise, it gains nothing but turmoil, angst, bitterness. The children hear this, and they see that mom and dad are always concerned about material things. And yes, they should be concerned. I'm telling you that, but not that it takes the place of everything. If we've done our preparation properly, then it has its place, and then we can focus on the spiritual. All of this is only to help the spiritual. We want to be good stewards. And to be a good steward, man, means that we are looking after so many aspects of life. We're really building a domestic church. I have the saying here that I'll read to you. What is called matriarchy is simple moral anarchy in which the mother alone remains fixed because all the fathers are fugitive and irresponsible. Now that comes from G.K. Chesterton. I'll read it again. Matriarchy is simple moral anarchy in which the mother alone remains fixed on her duty, but where are the fathers? They're all fugitive and irresponsible. That doesn't make sense. How are we going to build a Catholic culture, a Catholic church, a good strong body in this United States if we're all over the place? We don't know how to be good stewards. It's very important that you parents now, right now, teach your children how to be fiscally responsible. They need to know how to save their money. They need how to use their money. Because you're just training them. It's not about material focus so or all about money. No, nope. it's about training. Because otherwise they're not going to be the adults in their family that they should be. They're not going to be able to govern. They're not going to be able to lead. They're not going to be able to provide. Very, very important. It's all about this alms. What can I give of myself? What am I giving of myself? And so you see, I, I take us back a little closer to home here. You know, I've been in this parish seven years now, and I see the generosity of so many people. God bless you. We wouldn't survive and do the things we do today without your generosity. There's so many aspects. But they're faithful. The demographics is changing. The white Caucasian families, the Generous Filipinos of the past, they're getting older and they're disappearing. And who's taking their place? Less educated? From Spanish families who just want the mass and the sacraments for their children and go to school? They don't have all these big jobs and like lots of financial background. That's a big concern. In this parish, in 20 years, we'll be struggling financially. 
Within 20 years, this parish will be struggling financially. The emphasis is not upon education. It's not upon higher, higher jobs. It's not about saving. We can barely get by with what we have day to day in this state. You know, over the years, the secretary is no better than I. Some of the ushers know better than I because they've been here for years. They know how many people have passed through this parish. We'd be thousands. But they move on. Why? Because of finances. It's cheaper to live somewhere else. Got a school or a parish over there that they can now enjoy and live a little lower cost. You see, if that's the case, if, the, if California demands of us a certain financial responsibility, we have to try to meet it, otherwise we should leave. We can't make others suffer. We should not make our family suffer. So you imagine the responsibility and the effort it takes. And then on the part of all of us who maybe are financially stable, to help those who can't help themselves. That's the way it works, because you know what? God, again, is the master of the gifts he gives to us. So what is given to us now? You know what I mean, some of you who are elderly. What happens when you die? What's going to happen to all your possessions and the money that you possess? Are you going to give it to your children? Maybe you don't have any children. Then what happens? You know how many faithful I've run across in this parish who very generous people. At the end of their life, none of the things were in order. And they wanted the church to have this and that, and they wanted this family to benefit and whatever, but it was never put in order. And we never saw it. The parish never benefited from it. Do what you have to do now, knowing that those gifts that God gave you, as soon as you've expended the use of them, let them go. Let them go. Give them to somebody in need. We can't take it to the grave. We're not going to take it to heaven. Give it to somebody who, who can use it and benefit by the material goods that God blesses us with. You know, the United States has that reputation of being the most generous nation in the world. People, Americans are known all around the world as so generous at giving. The material prosperity that this world that we live in, the United States, is incredible. Incredible. Unfortunately, what we see today is it's been mismanaged. It is being mismanaged. And you as Catholics, myself as a pastor, do not want to fall into that camp. I've traveled around California, some of you have too. If you've ever left your hometown, if you've traveled anywhere in this long state, it's a very rich state. There's not a reason why every single family in this state can't have their own home and cannot be financially strong. No reason. But that's not the working model. You can vote for the same governor again if you wish. That type of governor? You think he's looking after families? I've told you before when you vote, you think about what's good for God, family, and country. That's most important. What are we doing as Catholics? We have to know what we're about. We're going to tell somebody else what to do. But are we much better stewards of the goods that God has given to us? It's hard for me to find a, a gentleman, a man, who is fiscally responsible and knows his way around providing. It's not easy to find a man like that. Because we're so close to ourselves, thinking about ourselves. What can I get out of it? And not wanting to push us, ourselves out of pride and get out of that pride and practice some humility. And really get down on our knees. You know what Fulton Sheen says? The man on his knees never trips. It's true. Can't fall down then. Put yourself on your knees every day. 
asking God as men, as fathers, I need help. Help me to raise my family. Give me what I need financially. Help me to be a good steward of my wife, my children, my finances, my home, my country. Dear faithful, we're trying to build a good church. We're trying to build even a domestic church in our homes. St. John Chrysostom says this, being men, we sin every day. But St. Paul consoles us by saying, renew yourselves from day to day. This is what we do with houses. <laughs> We're constantly repairing them as they break down. And we should do the same thing for ourselves. Materially, fiscally responsible. Because these are gifts that God gives us. We're not just going to run into heaven saying, God, I said my rosary. I may have even gone to Mass every day. And he said, and then what kind of tension did you have in your home with your wife because you didn't put any emphasis or stewardship upon the goods that I gave you? We're not just going to slip through. We might have to spend some time in purgatory. A long time. Because we weren't responsible with the goods that God gave us. I want you to, when you hear the Gospels, you think about, dear men especially, women following the men, you think about that. You think about how many times our Lord reminded us to be in the world and not of it, to be responsible for the gifts that he gave to us. And even today in this Gospel, which of you shall have an ass or an ox fall into a pit? What would you do? Oh, it's Sunday. I can't do anything with it. Imagine if a farmer who has a bunch of hay in the field and he has a rain coming. Oh, it's Sunday. I can't put my hay in the barn. And he loses the whole crop. And he loses the whole crop and he loses his income and his family starves. That is really responsible, isn't it? No, it's not. And what would God say about that? So don't get hung up on that type of pride. The Pharisees are proud. They're very proud. Be humble and acknowledge the things that God gives you that you want to be a good steward. Fiscally responsible, good steward, giving back, being generous, and teach your children this. I run across too many individuals, you know, I've had many employees over the years, and <laughs> I say, what did you do with all that money that we gave you? Yes, you worked for it, but you have nothing to show for it. What did you do with it? Always oh, spend it here, spend it there, spend it there. Yes, no responsibility. No sense of good stewardship. Pray to Our Lady. She's a good steward. The Blessed Virgin Mary knows what it means to be a good steward, and she will help us. Pray to her often. She's a good steward of the body of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.